ஹரே கிருஷ்ணா ஹரே கிருஷ்ணா ஹரே கிருஷ்ணா ஹரி கிருஷ்ணா மாதாஜி ஹூ இஸ் ஆன் த லைன் ஹலோ ஹாய் மை நேம் இஸ் சீமா மாதாஜி அண்ட் ஐ டுடே இஸ் மை ஃபர்ஸ்ட் டே ஜாயினிங் பிரேமா மாதாஜி கேவ் மீ திஸ் கான்ஃபரன்ஸ் கால் நம்பர் Hare Krishna Mata ji um you said your name is Seema is that it yes yes my name is Manasi Kanga and i live in Minnesota <clears throat> nice and um yeah and i join um daily um so welcome so nice that you're joining us do you she told me you're reading from canto 2 chapter 10 i have a book oh good yes 210 and i think it's 13 to 17 um 13 to 16 maybe yeah hari krishna hari krishna this is lila manjuri devi das ji a nice hari krishna mata ji there is a new participant her name is seema i guess prema rasa ago um she canceled she said that today was not going to be the day <laughs> so i think that we're all going to need to read and you know try to sure, participate yeah yeah. Fine. yeah okay yeah. so should we begin with the prayers yeah um <clears throat> let's do that i need to get my earphones here om agyana timirandasya jananjana shalakaya chakshurinilikena தஸ்மை ஸ்ரீகுரவே நம ஸ்ரீ சைத்தன்யாமனோம் ஸ்ரீகுருபதமலம் ஸ்ரீகுருவாம் சாகிரஜாத்தம் சகனரகுநாதாஞ்சிதம் தம் சஜீவம் ஹரேஷ்ணே <laughs> ஹரே ராம ஹரே ராம 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 ஹரே ஹரே நாராயணம் நமஸ்கிருத்தியரம் ஜெய்வாரோத்தமன் 
देवीं सरस्वती व्यासम तथो जय The Lord will lie on his bed of mystic slumber, generated this seminal symbol, golden in hue, through external energy out of his desire to manifest varieties of living entities from himself alone. In the Bhagavad Gita, the creation and annihilation of the material world are stated as follows. Sarva Bhutani Gundya Praktiyam Yanti Mamikam Kalpa Kaseya Bunastani Kalpadu Vishrami Aham Prakritam Savam Avastam Ya Visrami Punam Puna Buddha Kamam Imam Krishna Avasam Bhaktar Vasat. At the end of each millennium, the creative forces, namely the material nature and the living entities <coughs> who struggle in the material nature, all merge together into the transcendental body of the Lord. And again, when the Lord desires to manifest them, all of them are again displayed by the Lord. Therefore, the material nature is working under the control of the Lord. All of them under the agency of material nature and under the control of the Lord are thus repeatedly created and emulated by the will of the Lord. As such, before the creation, or manifestation of the material cosmic world, the Lord exists as total energy, Mahasamasti, and thus desiring himself to diffuse to many. He expands himself further into multi-total energy, Samasti. From the multi-total energy, he further expands himself into individuals in three dimensions, namely Adhatmic, at Hidyavik and Adhibhutik, as explained before, Vyasti. As such, the whole creation and the creative energies are non-different and different simultaneously. Because everything is an emanation from him, the Mahavishnu or Mahasamasti, nothing of the cosmic energies is different from him. But all such expanded energies have specific functions and displays as designed by the Lord, and therefore they are simultaneously different from the Lord. The living entities are also similar energy, marginal potency of the Lord, and so they are simultaneously one with and different from Him. At the stage of non manifestation, the living energies remain potent in the Lord, and when they are let loose in the cosmic manifestations, 
They are exhibited differently in terms of different desires under the modes of nature. Such differential manifestation of the living energies are conditional states for the living entities. The liberated living entities, however, in the Sanatana, eternal manifestation are unconditionally surrendered souls, and therefore they are not subject to the conditions of creation and annihilation. So this creation takes place by the glance of the Lord from his bedstead of mystic slumber, and thus all the universes and the Lord of the universe, Brahma, are again and again manifested and annihilated. Wow. Thank you, Mataji. Would you like to share something from what you have read? Um, he, well, this reminds me of like, you know, have you ever blown bubbles through a wand? Mm -hmm. Yes. Like the bubbles, they like, out of one like dip in the soap, like so many different bubbles will come one after the other. So when he talks about like, how all these creations are happening in three dimensions, but like, that's what it reminds me of. Mm. What would yes, you like to Yeah, that's a very nice example. It is like the picture that we see on Srimad Bhagavatam. Mahavishnu is lying on the causal ocean and then there are so many universes coming from the pores of his body. Yeah. Anything else you like to share? Uh, that's it for now. Okay. Thank you. Manisi Ganga Mataji, my sister, anyone wants to share? <clears throat> um, it seems like <clears throat> we've heard um, this, you know, where the Lord, um, everything comes from him and both his energies and himself, they're non-different. But um, we're hearing um, about the, the three um, divisions here, um, dimensions that were um, mentioned a few verses back, the Adyatmic, Adyadaivic, the Ad Adiabarctic, um, which <clears throat> are um, it just reminds me of what we heard so far, where um, these three and um, are interrelated and are interdependent. The Atmic is the um, the soul proper. Adiabarctic is the demigods and Abibautic is <clears throat> like the body, the material body, and how they're um, dependent upon each other as well as being dependent upon the Lord, um, whereas the Lord is independent at all times. And then later in the verse, it, <clears throat> it taught, makes a um, Srila Prabhupada talks about the unconditionally surrendered souls. So those three um, that we've had so far is, you know, the, the, the soul within the body, which is senses and the demigods, there can, this is talking about, <clears throat> um, you know, they're going to be going through birth after birth as long as they're conditioned souls and um at the end of the verse it made reference Shula Prabhupada made reference to unconditionally surrendered souls and these are the ones 
that are <clears throat> in the in the um, spiritual world right now, serving Krishna nonstop, and um, they are um, they're not subject to this creation and annihilation process that goes on over and over, where you know everything is created and goes through four yugas and then <clears throat> pulled back into the body of Mahavishnu. The the um <clears throat> the surrendered souls in the spiritual world are um are in on a platform where they do not have to go through that process but um they're blissfully serving the Lord um in his in his abode. And um, so it made a couple of references to some other terms, Mahasamasti. Um, and so um, it says, as such, before the creation or manifestation of the material cosmic world, the Lord exists as total energy, Mahasamasti, and thus desiring himself to be diffused to many, he expands himself further into multi-total energy. <clears throat> so what I'm hearing from this, um, and please, I'm still coming out of being sick, so please correct me, um, is that before manifestation of this material world, you know, after Mahavishnu pulls everything back into his, um, from the, everything from the material world back into his body, um, the Lord Mahavishnu is going to be existing as Mahasamasti, so it, total energy, and then um, and then ultimately um, the when he desires so he's going to manifest. It says here in the translation um, through the through the external energy out of his desire to manifest varieties of living entities from himself alone. So at a certain point, he has the desire again to, um, to manifest the material world and all the entities within it. And so um, he expands himself further um, into multi-total, further into, sorry, into, um, further into my multi-total energy, Samasti. So um, that's what pretty much I I got out of it. Um, so please continue on and um, add to what I had to say. Madhuri, uh, I um, have uh, a book in front of me that is written by Murijan Prabhu. So mm -hmm. you know, um, you know, since uh, we have we have the time today, um, maybe like we could read uh, from there uh, about like a summary of um, text ten to thirty one. So this will help us that would in be nice. classes. Yeah. So uh, yeah. and I have another reference book also. And um, maybe uh, one idea is that we could read the remaining verses because we have to finish until uh, uh, we were going to read until 17. So maybe if we read until 17, then I can uh, go back and read from those summaries, if that's okay with everybody. Okay. That works. <clears throat> is that okay, Primarisha? Yes. Okay, uh, would you like to read text 14, yes. 15, 16 through 17? Okay, I'll start reading. Um, okay, 14. Adi daivam atta yatat mam adi bhutam iti prabhu attaika kamparusam viryam trita Translation. Just hear from me how the potency of his lordship divides one into three, call, called the controlling entities, <clears throat> and the 
the controlled entities and the material bodies in the manner mentioned above. 15. Anta sarira akasat purusasya vichestaha oja saho balam jadne pata prano mahan asuhu. Translation. From the sky situated within the transcendental body of the manifesting Mahavishnu, sense energy, mental force, and bodily strength are all generated, as well as the sum total of the fountainhead of the total living force. 16. Anu prananti yam prana prantam sarva janustusu apanantam. Tam apananti naradevam ivanugaha. Translation As the followers of a king follow their Lord, similarly, when the total energy is in motion, all other living entities move, and when the total energy stops endeavoring, all other living entities stop sensual activities. Purport by A.C. Bhaktivedanta Srila Prabhupada. <clears throat> the, <clears throat> I'm sorry. the individual living entities are completely dependent on the total energy of the supreme Purusha. <clears throat> no one has independent existence, just as no electric lamp has independent effulgence. Each and every electrical instrument depends fully on the total powerhouse. The total powerhouse depends on the reservoir of water for generating electricity. Water depends on the clouds, the clouds depend on the sun, the sun depends on creation, and the creation depends on the movement of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Thus, the Supreme Personality of Godhead is the cause of all causes. 17. Antara Jayate Bibaho, Pipasato Jaksatas Cha, Pran Mukam Nirabhidyata. Translation The living force being agitated by the Virat Purusa generated hunger and thirst, and when he desired to drink and eat, the mouth opened. The process by which all living beings in the womb of the mother develop their sense organs and sense perceptions appear to follow the same principles in the case of the Virat Purusha, the sum total of all living entities. Therefore, the supreme cause of all generation is not impersonal or without desire. The desires for all kinds of sense perception and sense organs exist in the supreme and thus they take place in the individual persons. <clears throat> this desire is the nature of the supreme living being, the absolute truth. Because he is the sum total of all mouths, the individual living entities have mouths. Similarly, with all other sense organs, with all other senses and sense organs. Here the mouth is the symbolic representation of all sense organs. For the same principle, principles apply to the others also. Finished. Lila Manja? Yes. So, Trimarasa, would you like to read? Because you also have the same book. Okay, so, um, you know, I will save, um, the Primarissa has the same book, I'm reading his, so to speak, so maybe I will save that for her to read. I'll read from this book. Um, this is um, a commentary by Srila Vishwana Chakravarti Thakur on these verses, okay? So we read from text 13 and, you know, as I'm reading, if you guys feel inspired or if you want to stop and discuss something like this, feel free. 
So this is text 13. The one Lord desiring to become many rose from his bed after sleep of universal destruction and created the universe shining brightly in three forms of his energy. The Lord created three forms, Adi, Adi Daivam, Sense Devata, Adhyatnam, Sati Sense Organ, Adi Bhutam, Gross Sense Form. Commentary. How does the universal form, Samasti Virat, arise? This verse explains. The only entity merging the jivas and himself at the time of destruction was situated as one. After that, Anu, at the time of creation, he desired variety. Nana, Atvam. So I think that word is within the word. So they are highlighting that word. Eko, Nana, Atvam. He separated. He then separated the jivas from himself. From his bed of yoga, having slept at the time of destruction, representing night, the spiritual purusha, devata, then rose up in the morning at the time of creation. Having created the elements such as mahatattva by his energy, mayaya, he, creates, he created by these elements the universe with its layers shining brightly, Viryam with golden color. This is the great creation. The creation of the universal form situated in the shell, measuring 500 million yojanas took place by combining the laws energy with parts of the elements such as Mahatattva. The Purusha then entered the shell of the universe filled half of it with water emanating from himself and placing the universal form within himself, went to sleep on the Garbodak ocean. After that, he rose from his bed and manifested the totality of the universe, golden in color in three forms. Where, what are the three forms? These are Adi Daivam, Adhyatma, <coughs> and Adi Bhutam. The total, the totality or samasti will become the lotus stem arising from the Lord's navel. And this lotus stem will become the gross form of the universal form with four 14 planetary systems. It will also become the sati hiranya garbha, the form of Brahma consisting of the totality of Jesus. It will also become the four-headed Brahma who carries out creation. The Brahma has three forms. Four-headed Brahma, Hiranya Garbha, and the universal form. Now let us return to the topic at hand. So that is the commentary on text 13. Commentary on text movement. Anybody wants to say something? Uh, could you just repeat? <clears throat> <clears throat> so could you just like in your own words just say, so the the shell of the material universe, um, he made Mahavishnu and then he filled it with half with water, it said. And then um, the transition um about um from the lotus stem so what happened between that and the lotus stem um was there anything that i missed it's hard for me um, okay i've got um, a headache yeah i'll i'll read it again because thank you um yeah because i think this is also very new for me and uh but one thing that I grasped when I was hearing from my spiritual masters, um, the lecture that my spiritual master spoke on, is, mm -hmm. you know, there is a reference of the, um, there is a reference in this text where he says, the seminal symbol golden in hue. 
Okay, that's nothing but uh, uh, various universes. The different universes that came from the pores of Mahavishnu. Okay. Okay. So, this is what it says here. The total or samasti will become the lotus stem arising from the Lord's navel. Oh, I think uh, you were asking to read from before. Well, if there was anything between us two that I missed, maybe. <clears throat> okay, I'll as read well it again. As... Maybe uh, it will just help all of us. How does the universal form Samasti Virat arise? This verse explains. The one entity merging the jivas in himself at the time of destruction was situated as one. So the one entity that they're talking about, I would think of him as Mahavishnu. Mm -hmm. Because within the body of Mahavishnu, all of creation enters at the time of destruction. Okay. And at the time of creation, he desired to create many. That means the jivas again came out of his body. After that, the Anu, at the time of creation, he desired variety, Nana Atvam. He then separated the jivas from himself. Okay? From his bed of yoga, having slept at the time of destruction, representing night, the spiritual Purusha, Deva, then rose up in the morning at the time of creation. So, at least I could relate to it like this, that um, during the day of Brahma, creation happens, and at night, um, part of the creation is dissolved. But finally, when Lord Brahma himself um, uh, also died, at the time of his death, the entire universal creation goes back into the body of Mahavishnu. So at that time, um, during the night of Mahavishnu, everything is sucked back. And during the day of Mahavishnu, I think everything is created. I would think of it like that. Hmm. Okay. <clears throat> this, I, I don't know if everybody understood it the same way. That's what I was thinking as well. Okay. Yeah, okay. So let's see how it goes. Having created the elements such as Mahasattva by his energy, Mayaya, Mayaya is his energy, the name of his energy, she created by these elements the universe with its layers shining brightly, medium with golden colors. So it is said that each of this universe has um, seven layers around it. Earth, water, fire, air, liquid, um, mind, intelligence, and false ego. So each of this universe is covered by seven layers. Okay. And they were shining brightly. But these, these um, seeds of the universes were bright, golden, and color. This is the great creation. The creation of the universal form situated in the shell measuring 500 million yojanas took place by combining the Lord's energy with parts of the elements such as Mahatattva. So now this is something new for me, but at least what I understand is the measurement of um, the universal form is 500 million yojanas. I think each yojana is eight miles. <clears throat> so eight. So this is five hundred million into eight miles. So which is about forty hundred. Forty hundred means four thousand million miles. That's how big. Uh, the Portalia. universal yeah. form is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Took place by combining the Lord's energy with parts of the elements such as Mahatattva. So Krishna's, I mean, Mahavishnu's energy and the elements together 
uh, are is what makes us the universal form. The Purusha then entered the shell of the universe. So now, um, after each of those uh, universal seeds are created, Mahavishnu's expansion, or he he, um, he enters uh, into each of these shells. So are we talking about a number of universes being created at the same time after annihilation all the universes have um entered into his body and now he is creating <coughs> simultaneously <coughs> simultaneously at one time a number of other universes or is are is it like uh, at all different times that these are happening that's a good question. I was thinking about the same thing. Um, at least based on this verse, that's what it seems. But I have also heard that when Mahavishnu inhales, he's talking that Mahavishnu has spent a whole night and he's waking up during daytime for creation. But at other places I've so, heard, all he has to do is to inhale. And he inhales all of the creation, not all, but at least part of the creation goes inside. And when he exhales, so it's, it's just one breath. It's not one night even. So I've heard both. So if anybody else wants to share about it, like the time of creation and annihilation. It just makes me think of um, you know how we talk about <clears throat> in science black holes. Mm -hmm. um, you know how everything goes into the black hole. You know, mm -hmm. it just makes me think of this. Um, you know, this black period where you say the night of Brahma, um, where like if everything has been pulled in, it's kind of like a like a black hole. And um, I don't know, just makes me think of that. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, actually, Mataji, during the night of Brahma, only uh, part of the creation is annihilated. Okay. You see what I'm right. saying? There is a difference between the night of Brahma and the night that is being explained here. Okay, uh, so <coughs> during the night, the of, night Brahma, of Brahma, Brahma is still alive with his uh, with his uh, heavenly kingdom, mm -hmm. and the heavenly kingdom is still part of the material world. So it has not been destroyed at that time. Okay. But now this is, I think, the night of the Purusha or Mahavishnu that we are speaking about. Okay. Okay, thank you. <coughs> okay. Um, so let's read further. Um, the Purusha then entered the shell of the universe, filled half of it with the water emanating from himself, and placing the universal form within himself, went to sleep in the Garbhodak Ocean. So now this is, this is not Mahavishnu. The second Vishnu is Garbhodaksha Vishnu. Right? Mm -hmm. So Garbhodaksha Vishnu, he enters into each of the universal shells. So he manifests himself into as many universes are there. And he fills half of the universe universal shell with water and half of it is empty. Um, it said that the water is nothing but his sweat. So he's sleeping on that water. Therefore, he's called Karpodaksha Vishnu. And placing the universal Nothing but his form, breath? Nothing but his what? Sweat. Sweat. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's the water. Mm -hmm. uh, 
and placing the universal form within himself, went to sleep in the Garbodak Ocean. So who sleeps in Garbodak Ocean is Garbodak Vishnu. So this is the second of the Purusha forms. After that, he rose from his bed and manifested the totality of the universe, golden in color, in three forms. What are the three forms? These are the Adidaivam, Adhyatmam, and Adibhutam. So I have never heard this before. So this is new for me. But Dhatvadaksha Vishnu uh, manifests the totality of the universe. This totality or Samasti, that means actually um, we can relate to it a little bit because there is a stem that comes from the navel of Garbhodaksha Vishnu on which Lord Brahma is born. Mm -hmm. The total or Samasti will become the lotus stem arising from the Lord's navel and this lotus stem will become the gross form of the material universe, sorry, of the universal form with 14 planetary systems. It will also become the subtle Hiranya Garbha, the form of Brahma consisting of the totality of Jesus. It will also become the four headed Brahma who carries out creation. Thus, Brahma has three forms four headed Brahma, Hiranya Garbha, and universal form. Now, let us return to the topic at hand, like what it says. Thank you, Mataji. So I feel like this last portion is something new for me. If anybody uh, wants to share anything more based on what they have heard or read or understood. Okay, uh, should I read further? It's uh, the next uh, translations and purports are relatively short. Uh, yeah, okay, Marissa, that was. Okay, maybe she is here. Okay, text. Uh, this is the translation for 14. Then the one shining Purusha divided into three forms. Please hear about this commentary. These three forms, universal form, Hiranya Garbha and four headed Brahma, are different from the Adi Daiva, Adhyatma, and Adi Bhuta. That's the commentary. It doesn't say explain anything further. For text 15, it says. From the ether within the body of the universal form, who was acting in various ways, aroused the shakti of the senses, mind, and body, and from them aroused the best life air called Sutra. Commentary From the ether within the body of the universal form, who was acting in various ways, Vichesh Kitaha aroused the energies of the senses, Oja, the mind, Saha, and the body, Balam. From the subtle form of these three energies, Tataha, aroused the best life air, manifestation of air, Asaha, called Sutra, Pranaha. So there is further description of how um, varieties of things come from the universal form. So at least uh, three things that have been described here is the um, energy of the senses, the mind, and the body. And then there is another thing which is called Sutra. And there is a footnote here. It says, Sutra is the portion of Mahatattva 
with the predominance of rajas it's not part of vayu this will be explained in commentary on 2524 translation on text 16 the senses become active after following after the action of sutra and become inactive when the sutra becomes inactive just as servants follow after a king commentary this shows the greatness of the sutra by its power to manifest life by its power to manifest life the senses prana perform actions following after the sutra which performs action and this is action when the sutra stops action they are like the servants of a king in text 17 translation being stimulated by the sutra hunger and thirst appeared within the universal form a desire to drink and eat first the mouth became distinct commentary being agitated by sutra hunger and thirst arouse within the universal form vibho this form is addressed as the lord because the form is being worshiped with respect the universal form is here being attributed to the supreme lord thus the form desire to eat and drink first the mouth became distinct mera abhidhyata manasikanga mathi in the christian understanding um i think there is a similar parallel right because uh, somewhere i heard the lord desired to see therefore light appeared something like that yeah <clears throat> right there was light and then he uh, yeah uh, following all his desires um things were created and last was um man and then woman mm-hmm. okay ma'am this uh, is the yeah, commentary was, and um uh, i think it but um, at least it was difficult for me to understand or grasp but there is another section if everybody would like i can read it it's uh, about two pages but maybe we'll get a better understanding of these um is this burjan sir is this from the yeah, same book yeah this is burjan prabhu what i read was a uh, um, commentary by vishnu chakravarti thakur and this is burjan prabhu's book okay. is it okay with everybody uh seema and timarasa are you still there Yeah, we're the same. Perfectly. Okay. Thank you. Okay, this is a summary for text 10 through 31 of this chapter. So, if you cover at least um more than what we are covering. The conclusion implies implied in the previous section assured us that the lord is always independent even when he is in the universe as a super soul the dependent jeevas therefore should leave aside their illusion of independence and serve the supreme lord for no one but he can be the shelter of all everything ultimately depends fully on him to demonstrate that only krishna is the independent lord and that everything else depends on him Sri Lakshmi Goswami now text 10 uh, describes Mahavishnu's cosmic creation after separating the different universes the gigantic universal form of the lord mahavishnu which came out of the cosmic ocean the place of appearance of the first purusha avatar 
entered into each of the separate universes desiring to lie on the created transcendental waters garbodaka shila prabhupada explains the purpose of this narration in his purport to text 10 After analysis of the living entities and the supreme lord Paramatma, the independent source of all living beings, Sri Lakshmi Goswami is now presenting the prime necessity of devotional service to the Lord, which is the only occupational business of all living entities. The supreme lord Sri Krishna and all his plenary portions and extensions of plenary portions are non-different from one another. and thus the supreme independence is in each and every one of them in order to prove this sukadev goswami as promised to king parikshit describes here in the independence of the purusha avatar personality of god even in the even in the sphere of the material creation such activities of the lord are also transcendental and therefore they are also leela or pastimes of the absolute lord such pastimes of the lord are very conducive for the hearers for self realization in the field of devotional service some may argue why not then relish the transcendental leela of the lord as exhibited in the land of mathura and vrindavan which are sweeter than anything in the world shrila vishwana chakravarti thakur replies that the pastimes of the lord in vrindavan are meant to be relished by advanced devotees of the lord neophyte devotees will misunderstand such transcendental activities of the lord and therefore the lord's pastimes in the material sphere related to creation maintenance and destruction are very relishable by the prakrita or the mundane devotee of the lord so kadem goswami continues the absolute truth is clearly a person one should know that all the material ingredients activities time and the modes of nature as well as the living entities who try to enjoy matter exist only by his mercy as soon as he withdraws his care everything ceases to exist everything depends on him thus mahavishnu while lying on his bed of mystic slumber generated the seminal symbol golden and huge through his external energy out of his desire to manifest varieties of living entities from himself alone thus the creation begins with the lord and when it is time to recreate the universe the lord again creates he is fully independent of the material world everything is ultimately non different from him everything including the adhyatmic adi daivik and adi bhautik persons manifest from the energy he sets in motion shila prabhupada states this truth clearly in the purport to text 16 no one is independent has independent existence just as no electric lamp has independent effulgence each and every electrical instrument depends fully on the total power house and the total power house depends on the reservoir of water for generating electricity water depends on the clouds and the clouds depend on the sun the sun depends on creation and the creation depends on the movement of the supreme personality of godhead this the supreme personality of godhead is the cause of all causes from his energies and by his will the virat purusha gradually develops just as a child develops in the womb first the virat rupas sense energy mental force and bodily strength are generated these dictate the living entity's movement just as the king's movement lead lead his citizens next because the virat purusha possesses living force he develops hunger and thirst and opens his mouth then as one after another the palate ears eyes nostrils legs hands skin genital anus navel mind abdomen intestines life breath blood fat marrow and bone are generated as each of these bodily parts 
the adipotic person in the virat purusha is generated the appropriate controlling dt adi daivik person is generated for example varuna the demigod controlling the tongue and sense of taste is generated simultaneously with the virat purusha's tongue the individual soul who will experience material life through senses by the potency of these controlling demigods is called the adhyatmic person commenting on text 18 shri lakshita swami remarks that in subsequent verses one should infer that any sense organs residing deities or sense objects not mentioned have also been generated the principle described in text 17 to 31 serve to reiterate how the three interdependent sense controllers adi bhautik adi daivik and adhyatmik ultimately depend on the supreme lord he alone is independent although the living entity thinks himself independent he is not his ability to see is dependent on the universal form of vision yet krishna allows each living entity the choice to use his senses either for his own pleasures or for his service shrila prabhupad explains how this topic is relevant to the greater topic being discussed the ashraya the living entity can only see can see only when the lord sees the living entity can smell when the lord smells and so on the idea is that the living entity cannot do anything independently he can simply think of doing something independently but he cannot act independently this independence of thinking is there by the grace of the lord but the thinking can be given shape by the grace of the lord and therefore the common saying is that man, man proposes and god disposes the whole explanation is on the subject of the absolute dependence of the living entities and absolute interdependence sorry absolute independence of the supreme lord and in his purport to the text 24 in every item we can note with profit that the sense organs of the living entity are never independent at any stage the lord is known as the lord of the senses shishikesh the sense organs of the living entity are manifested by the will of the lord and each organ is controlled by a certain type of demigod no one therefore can claim any proprietorship of the senses the living entity is controlled by the senses the senses are controlled by the demigod and the demigod are the servants of the supreme lord this could you repeat that one more time mathi okay. can you repeat that sentence the living entity is controlled by the senses the senses are controlled by the demigod and the demigod are the servants of the supreme lord that is the arrangement in the system of creation the whole thing is controlled ultimately by the supreme lord and there is no independence either of the material nature or of the living entity Matthias, any of you want to share any concluding remarks before we stop for today? It was a good reading session. I always heard the story before, but it's the first time I'm actually reading it from here. Mm-hmm. Thank you for joining. Yeah, I'll try to join next Thursday perhaps. We'll see. Mhm. 
But uh, thank you, Dior. No, uh, Thursday my house is quiet. Nobody comes home early on Thursday. Okay. Okay. Primarasa, are you still there? Maybe she's doing something. Yes, thank you for reading. Thank you, Mataji, for reading all that and um, rereading certain points. Um, yeah, very, very interesting. Um, what I just, what I'm taking away with is um, you made the statement, you read the statement that um, that the living entity cannot act independently. He can only think of uh, of possibly acting, but it's only through um, Rishikesha, the Lord of the Senses, that anything can actually um, be done. Um, so that just is, um, and that is um, very interesting. You know, we hear time and time again, we're not the doers, we're not the doers. Mm. And it's um, it's just like another way to look at that statement and how, um, you know, they said that you read that we cannot see if, um, would you say, if the Lord if, is to be. Say that like again. The that, yeah, the Lord sees. Yeah, so to the Lord seeing that we are able to see, et cetera. So just, um, yeah, we <laughs> just um, puts me in my place. So, you know, I just um, how dependent we are, like, um, and I had heard when I was growing up, there was a song, I can't remember the name of it, um, where, like, it made reference to like, you know, that we see for God and we, you know, et cetera, like um, that we're all extensions of him. I can't even remember what the song is or what the artist was, that um, they were all extensions and <clears throat> that we're here so that we can see for the Lord and we can act for the Lord, et cetera. So it's kind of just, um, that's, and I'm wondering, I mean, the Lord can see without us. Um, so it's different than the song, but um, but it's um, somehow connected how um, that it's not us, you know, it's not in our control, actually. Yeah, so thank you, Mataji, for, for leading this discussion and... Um, and reading and tomorrow I read and oh my gosh, I probably have no idea what I'm going to be reading. I haven't read it yet. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. Yeah, I wish I had that book. I need to order that book. Um, the unveiling of the, the Lotus Feet. Um, mm -hmm. It probably would be helpful. No? Sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, mm -hmm. and the, one thing that came to my mind as we were reading this is my uncle is a doctor and mm -hmm. uh, and uh, like both my uh, grandmother and my uncle my this is this is a different uncle that I'm talking about like my first uncle and my grandmother both of them passed away after having a paralytic attack so mm -hmm. what what happens is Krishna gives us this ability to use our body, and my uncle, who who was a do who is a doctor, he's still alive. This third uncle of mine, so he was telling me, like, um, you know, one day he was he was just sitting and he likes to talk, and one day he was telling, you know, this was never your property anyway. 
and if god gives it and don't and he takes it we cannot protest mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah so i mean even doctors you know who claim to um, do so many things and they're so proud of their when krishna takes it away there is nothing they can do they're so proud mm. of this technology but everything fails yeah i'm reminded of i heard a class recently and maybe also it was mentioned here in our classes too how uh, our body is not even ours <laughs> you know mm-hmm. it's the property well that's the proper attitude is that our body is the property of the lord and mm-hmm. that's um that's very telling it's very um you know it's going to take some adjustment on my part to to totally act in accordance to that um yeah because um yeah that's a that's a big thing to think of the body that you know that we have identified for so many years with number one is not us yes you know that that settling into place i'm understanding that but that it's not even you know mine of course i should have known that when we hear that you know everything belongs to the lord but um but just hearing it like separated just our body is you know is the lord's um you know i hear always you know we should try to be instruments of the lord blah 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 but um but that's even you know more severe to think that um this body is not mine yeah anyway I'm still always I'm still thinking of that since I've heard that <laughs> I'm just like trying to adjust my mind and understand that. Okay, Mataji, thank you very much for participating in the mm-hmm. reading and um so we'll conclude this today. Um Okay. Shri Prabhupada ki jai, Shri Mataji ki jai, Jai Krishna. Hi, Krishna.